Right then, you're on his back, tinker with tanks, and for once, we're actually really tinkering with an actual tank. So we're gonna do a compression test on our Avery to see what health the engine is. Centurion Avery. Um, Centurion gun tank is parked beside it. Our chieftain's hiding here. CT, there's a ferret in there somewhere. Fox, Saver, 434, Sultan, Snowtrack. I'd like to keep a compression test reading on system so in future if we've got running issues or something that we're not quite sure we can always refer back to it and uh, so we can do another test and think oh you know what we're we're now low on that cylinder we've got an issue there or such and such so uh right so i've got a meteor here i'll show you this one's actually a display engine although you're going to see us rebuild that this year to go in a tank but not too much of that so we have a set of spark plugs in this dark hole here we have a set of spark plugs down here Exhaust manifolds sand go on them studs there. Spark here. We call them the exhaust plugs. We also have a set of spark plugs inside. And these are the inlet manifolds. So we call them inlet spark plugs. A couple of reasons they got twin spark plugs. It was decided that they, the petrol wasn't burning quick enough across the face, top, the whole face of the piston when running. So they added a second spark plug so it burned it from both sides. The other thing you've got to remember, a Meteor is um, a, an engine derived from the Merlin, which is an aircraft engine. Now, if you've only got one set of spark plugs in your airplane and they stop working, like points and magnetos do, you can't pull into a lay-by to stop. So they will run on just exhaust or just inlet plugs. So if you get a mag go down, they will still run, not full power, kind of like half power, two thirds of power. It's noticeable, you, 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 you know when you've got one down. So what we've done is we've removed the exhaust plugs because they are a lot easier to get to. The in, as I said, the inlet plugs are, the inlet spark plugs are tucked underneath all the carburetors and all that jazz, which makes them an absolute nightmare to get to. So I've got 12, so 12 spark plugs lined up here. I've got six from GU side. And I've got six from oil tank side. Got me and a uh, Josh. In fact, it should just be tinkering out tanker tanks, Aaron and Josh. That would just, there's always a Josh. It's always a Josh. Should I know which one it is? We've got Leprechaun Josh, or not Leprechaun Josh. Neither of which are Irish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, neither of which are Irish. Although Leprechaun Josh thinks he's Welsh. And the fact that he thinks he's Welsh means he probably oh. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, from a, from a Norfolk town up the road here. Yeah. But he thinks he might be Welsh. So yeah, so A bank and B bank. As you look, this is the front of the engine. Clutch is, clutch is here, and the front of the tank is that way. You've got a B bank, which is nice and smooth. An A bank that has just all of the crap on top. Got the dynamo, and then you've got the oil filter. Which I suppose isn't crap, but cluttered. It's a cluttered head. Then we've got a bit of paper where we've got A and B and then we've got space for wet and dry if we need to do a wet test. And we'll talk you through that if we do. So we're gonna send Josh up there. The test? Up there. Up there. Oh. The pressure tester is there. It is. Welcome to the fridge. Currently uh, referred to as the driving compartment of our St. Torin Avery. So I'm in here, I'm going to be uh, Pressing the button to start it while Josh does the compression readings. It's quite dark in here, so you can't see a lot. We, we're just waiting on Josh. I'm waiting on you. You're waiting on me, right out. So uh, let's, first one. It's quite odd, isn't it? You heard as she turns over, you can you tell when 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 she's on compression on the um, one we're testing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you join me down here in the uh, engine bay, and we've this is B bank. You see, we've got the, the cleaner rocker cover. We've done the first three. I thought we'd uh, grab the camera, bring it in here. So this is still in. Cylinder number three, this uh, the hose gauge goes in the end. 
kind of thing. So good morning. You can't really see what I'm doing because it's dark. But if I just try and one-handed get all this out. See, there ain't a lot of room in here. Don't where a fuel tank would be, so we don't run the uh, the wing tanks. So that's half of it out. There is still a little bit in here. If I can reach in and find it, it's here. Okay, there's the actual bit. And if I move on, find number four, which so it's in the darkness. Can't really see what I'm doing. Just done by feel. It's in. back up on the uh, on the oil tank as I can then okay John there we go so you can just about see that and if I shout yeah So you can see the gauge went up and is going back down because the gauge leaks a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm perched up here, so there's not a lot of room. I've got the fan spinning right behind me because it is still turning over. And uh, I'll be careful with HT leads because even though the ignition's off, the uh, the booster coil's still running, which is always fun. Um, so yeah, I'll write that down and we'll move on to the next one. on it hard enough you'll find where it says park side <laughs> oh into the darkness I go then See, I had a nice oil cooler that I could uh, put my bit of cardboard and my pen on and the gauge. Problem is, when I'm down, if I'm going to do start at like number one, one through like four, I probably need to actually be underneath the donkey engine. Yeah. I don't know, you won't be able to see me. Exactly, you'll see you go in there. I generally do these ones by feet. I did, I got, like, yeah.
The oil pressure gauge is electric. It is, yeah. Because I found it. Yeah, you found it on there. Take to my knee. Where's number one? Number one over here. There it is. Luckily, because they are directly underneath the manifold, and you can kind of, yeah. I, I can figure out where they are just by feel. Well, like whatever, whatever that sense is, where you like, you kind of know where your hands are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One four five. One four five. One three five. Right then. So that is compression test complete, and our readings are pretty damn good. So let me take you some lights so you can read them. Perhaps we'll use a ferret. Right then. So, B bank, our highest is 145. Our lowest bit 135, although we're pretty sure that is the compression, that is the tester. These two and these two are awkward angles to get it in and we think we're losing the, the pipe on it is not brilliant. Don't we Josh? Them two and these two. Yeah, whereas the rest you can get the pipe one nicely. So we're 145 down to about 135, potentially 140. And then this side again, the torqued ones are 135 and the rest are 140, 145. So compression readings, the important bit is not necessarily the number, or the number is important, is how close they are together. Anything more than 10%, you've got issues and you'll hear it when it runs. It'll sound like a misfire. We are well and truly within 10%. Um, ten percent being on this like fourteen odd psi, and the furthest our way we're one hundred thirty five to one hundred forty five, so we're ten. And we're pretty sure the one hundred thirty five is the tester, as well as low. Oh, well, that's brand new today as well. So yeah, we're we're happy with them readings. So they're so now we know the engine is good because there was a slight slight question mark. The reason why we've done a compression test, she's at the minute being a bit of a stubborn mare starting and running we want to eliminate a few things so we want to make sure a the, the engine's in good health which now we know it is so our three sides of the of the uh, you know your fire triangle of the engine is we need compression we need fuel and we need spark well we've got the compression bit so our problem must be in the sparky bit or the fuel bit so we're going to go on an adventure and start looking for some bits so any else got classic cars or tractors or bits and pieces knows that you need a lot of spares and bits and pieces to keep them going we've got lots of little hidey holes of spares of stuff that we need to keep them going not the neatest of places but for centurions this is a gold mine so let's go on the hunt so, yeah, crankshaft from Meteor, another crankshaft from Meteor, camshafts, all them boxes there are various Meteor components, barrels, there's a, there's a block there, and a wheel case. Um, all filter housing, rocker covers, start motor. New exhaust gaskets. Neither of that what we're after. That wheel case down there, has it got magged on? Where is the wheel case gone? I don't know, where did you spot one? I pointed where I knew where it was. I didn't actually spot it. No mags? No mags. Right, so mag's not there. 
Oh, Antar. I want them down. It's the wing mirror brackets. Yeah. Got barrels for me you're there. So right, we're gonna come back to you once we find what we're looking for. Right, so that's the first pallet of stuff down. We are now after the carburetor. Two carbs down out of the uh, the stalls up there. Now the first one, what it is, we haven't this, we haven't got time to take the carbs off the Avery, rebuild them, and put them back on. Um, we're going to be our time, current time frame. I'm going to need to rebuild a set of carbs up one evening, and let manifold some bits and pieces, and then whip them off one morning, sit the new ones on. Jobs are good, and is what uh, the, the the plan is. First carburetor. So these are a updraft carburetor. So air comes in the inlet, down, twin, down into this chamber here, and then up through these carbs. One each side, although there is two carbs inside of each one carb. So technically four carburetors. They're big. That is a big carb. And then even bigger when you think the choke is in here. So where most choke carbs have the chokes in the carb, nope. Our choke or strangler valve, as it's referred to, is in here. So yeah, being updraft on the, on the, so this is another one complete with inlet manifold. So you can see the air comes in, down, into here, up through the carburetor, and then this is our inlet manifold. Also, I have got some caps, some base plates for magnetos and points and bits and pieces. I've got a new set of harnesses which we'll build up. These are all in component forms at the minute, but we can build them up. Um, I've got another set of old HT leads and ignition harnesses, which we're going to build up and put a spare on the shelf. And I've got some fan tensioners, fan belt tensioners. So this video obviously being a bit different because we haven't necessarily built anything or done anything. We compression test the, the Avery, obviously. Um, it's more of a what's coming up and what we're up to sort of episode. So over the next few months, or no, over the next month or so, you're going to see we're going to build some magnetos for a Centurion. We're going to build up some carburetors and inlet manifolds for the Centurion. We're going to build up some fuel pumps. We're going to build up ignition harnesses and that sort of stuff. And I, I think that's quite cool stuff because that's just so big and different to cars and that sort of thing. Let us know down below what bits you're looking forward to seeing rebuilt. So that is us done for now. See you in the next one.